Hey guys, it's Amy at Zoe Beck and I'm going to do my top 10 reads of 2021. So I read a lot of great things this year. I had 21 five star reads and I had so many four star reads, which is great. So um, again, that kind of helps when you DNF things that you don't like. So my ratings were fair, were pretty fair. So, but 21, um, I could have gone through all those, but I decided just to cut it down to 10 because as much as I just wanted to focus on the very, the cream of the crop for me for this year. So again, a lot of these books did come out in 2021, but some of them did not. So I definitely have a range of backlist as well. But um, I just, these are books that I really love and all of them are like ones that really affected me or I, I want to reread right now, which is what makes it a five star read for me. So um, there are um, one, there are, most of them are just one book in a series. Like I have that because I have a couple of series books in here. There is one author on here twice. I don't think anybody's going to be surprised about that, but uh, there are two different series. So I consider them separately. <laughs> so that's how I got away with it. But they are my top reads. So I want to make sure that I got them in here. So anyway, so starting at number 10 is Nalini Singh with Last Guard. So this is uh, the book, um, the book 20 in the Side Changing series or five in the Side Changeling Trinity series. So again, this is not a book you start with. This is, as I said, the most current book in that series. Always start with Slave to Sensation. This is a paranormal romance, urban fantasy series that with um, shifters and psychics and humans vying for power in the future. Uh, and I just, I really enjoy this series. It's one of my favorites, again, is that I reread these, the books all the time. I've already reread this once. So, and I'm going to get the paperback in another month. I'll probably reread it soon after that. It is just a fun ride. We're following characters that I didn't expect to really enjoy. There's a lot of um, disability rep in this one. And there's also, um, again, learning more about the world, which is what every book seems to do in the Side Changing series. It just grows and grows how she world builds. And it's, she's phenomenal at it. So this, again, is uh, just a favorite already. And again, I've already reread it once, so that counts. Anyway, so that was book 10. Book nine is For the Wolf by um, Hannah Witten. So this is the first book in a duology, um, uh, The Wider, wi Wilder Wood. So um, this follows Red, who is the second daughter in her kingdom of the, from, you know, and royalty wise. And they have a saying that the first is for the throne the second is for the wolf. And so she is to be sacrificed to the woods to, um, and the wolf who lives there to try to release the gods of the world uh, that have been stolen away. So this didn't go in any direction that I thought it would. I had a real fun time with it. And um, again, I loved Red and Neoman. And I just, I loved this book. And I'm really looking forward to reading it. I'm trying to hold off until we get closer to when the second book in the duology is coming out um, this summer. So I'll probably read it pretty soon. I really enjoyed it. I think um, it went in directions I didn't expect, especially near the end. I'm like, I didn't have any idea that that was gonna happen. I don't know what I expected, but it's not a Little Red Riding Hood retelling, it's more of a Beauty and the Beast. But I think it was, I think her descriptions of the woods is just fantastic. And it really, it was just a slow burn story. I just, I really enjoyed this and I can't wait to reread it. So that'll happen sooner rather than later, probably. Um, so number eight is Portrait of a Marriage, Vita Sackville West and Harold Nicholson by Nigel Nicholson. So this is talking about Vita Sackville West and her life. And it, this has half of the book is by her son, um, Nigel, and then the other half is her diary entries or her start of a bi autobiography on a certain time period in her life. And it's showing the relationship between her and her husband. And I read um, several, I read, well, I read one book on that she wrote called All Sp Passion Spent, which almost made this list, but didn't quite, because I felt that this was the one I think about the most all the rest of the year after I've read this and I'm still thinking about it and I just find it fascinating the things she said and did and that um, in the time period um, that this happened. I did also love the love letters of Vita Sackville West and Virginia Woolf. That was really excellent to see their letters back and forth. I did love that too but this was just beat it out just because it was kind of a mixture of her history 
by her son, his parts, and then also her own words in her of what happened during this certain time period in her life. And I just, I found this so fascinating and she, she just fascinates me. And so I definitely want to read more of her books in this coming year. I bought them all. I need to read them now. <laughs> and then I also want to try to get another biography on her that's a little bit more in depth. I just haven't found which one I'm going to pick up yet. So if you have recommendations, let me know. But anyway, I just, I really um, enjoyed this book for what it did and made me think about th certain things just on her life. And she just fascinates me. Anyway, so I do, I, I put that, even though there's other books that I had five star reads that were connected to her, that was the one that just called out to me. Uh, number seven is Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day by Winifred Watson. I just adored this. I had had this on my shelf for a couple of years. I think I was one of the first it was like, I think it was the first Persephone I bought book that I bought at, after joining booktube and I've had it on my shelf and then um, there was kind of a read along this year. So I, I even went to the live show on it. I just, oh, this was just so much, or a Zoom call. I don't remember what it was. It was something like that. It was just, this was so good. And I, I did not expect half the stuff that happened in here about this woman who gets sent to the wrong job and she's kind of down and out on her and she meets this uh, actress and it just changes her life and the people that she meets. I just thought it was so cute. And I definitely, um, I bought the audiobook because everybody was talking about the audiobook as well. They said it was really good. So I bought the audiobook. So I have that to re-listen to hopefully this next year. I just think this is going to be a great reread. I just, just enjoyed this. I read this so fast and it just, it was so sweet. I just love this book and it just, and it didn't go in ways I expected at all, which is always one of my favorite things about books is when you think it's going to be one way and it, I mean, not, okay, when it's in a, in a good way, it goes in ways that I didn't expect. Sometimes it doesn't always work out. But this one, I just, I liked the way um, things built on each other. And it, it just, it was the growth of the characters was what was what I really liked. So anyway, I really, really loved that book. Uh, number six is um, another nonfiction. This is The Hidden Face of Eve by Noel L. Swati. So this is translated from the Arabic... Uh, by Shir uh, Shiraf Hatata. So um, I read this at the beginning of the year and I still think about parts of this book. So this was um, talking about um, oh, the just the violence and the um, inequality between men and women in, um, well, this is like written in the 70s, I think. And um, oh, the beginning part was just heartbreaking on her childhood. Um, in Egypt and stuff that happened to her and her her I think her sister and it was just all the things that happened the people that she knows and then I think she was um she just she worked as a doctor and so she has all these insights about things that she saw and that people dealt with and it's just um a horrible look at how how women were treated are treated there in the in this time frame um again and um and then also she goes back kind of into history and stuff and talks about um, what's changed and what what hasn't and stuff like that. It was just, it was a very powerful book. Very hard hitting, very hard to get through. But I, I really think it was uh, really important. And I'm glad I read this again. I read this early in the year. So I think she passed away later in the year um, from after I'd read this. And I did read one of her novels and I didn't get along with it quite so well. But um, there's another one I want to try, so we'll see. But I this nonfiction was just so powerful, and I, I recommend it if you want to look into um, that time, that area, especially uh, from the 70s and uh, earlier, because, again, she does go back into history and talk about things. It's just, oh, it was just so hard, some of the chapters about the history. And then, again, the, the beginning was just heartbreaking. I mean, I was crying, like, within <laughs> the first 50 pages because of what happens. So, anyway, I... Really, that still think about that book. Uh, so number five is another Nalini saying this is the second entry. So this is Archangel's Light, which is book 14 in the Guild Hunter series. I love this book. This follows two characters that we've known since the very first, well, the first couple of books. Um, and then there, so it's a great story for people who've read the whole series. You don't want to start with this book. Again, I would say that with most of my series books. But um, we follow them um, from their childhood, and then it's intermixed with what's happening nowadays in, the, in this world. So this world is a place where angels, or archangels rule the world, 
and there are angels and there are vampires and then humans and then there are some called guild hunters who have special abilities um, and also are hunters of werewolves, or of, sorry, of vampires who uh, go off the rails and <laughs> they take care, they are sent in to do that. And so um, this is one of those good ones where it's again, it's, an, it's a, it has certain books that are focused on certain couples, but it also has a very big overarching um, uh, arc that has two main characters who are um, talked about like in this book, but not, they're not really in this book. So it's like they have certain books that are theirs and then there are other people around them that have their books. So this is theirs and this is one I didn't expect what, I didn't know what to expect when I found out it was going to be their book. And I'm so glad of the way that this went. Uh, I know some people didn't enjoy it, but I, I loved it. It was just, it was so good. It was just a great, another addition to the series. Definitely a book I'm going to reread. I was already thinking about picking this up just the other day and I was like, no, 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 I need to read these other things, but this is going to be a reread pretty soon. So again, as I said, I, I love her. Well, again, I love Nalingi Singh, so I don't think it's any surprise her books made it on my list. <sighs> so this was a hard between this one and number three, kind of back and forth. Even now I'm kind of questioning myself on which, which, which ones I'm going to do, but I'm going to go with the uh, <laughs> Magic Rises by uh, Alona Andrews. This is, I think this is the, I don't remember now if it's the five or six. Oh, it's the sixth book. Yeah, in the Kate Daniels series. So I again read the whole Kate Daniels series. So this is representing the whole series because this of all the books was my favorite. Several of them got five stars out of me because I just loved them. And I just, I'm so excited to do a reread of this. So again, this is a series where, urban fantasy series where we're following Kate who um, is a mercenary and it's her journey through life of when she meets uh, people in Atlanta and how it, things kind of just escalate. And it's in a world uh, post-apocalyptic where um, magic has come back to the world. So um, when the magic is up, no technology works. And when the magic is down, then technology can work. So it's kind of a give and take kind of on that. And uh, just things, it's just, I love Kate. <laughs> and I love a lot of the side characters as one of my, this was the most heartbreaking for me because of people who were hurt, maimed, and even some death. And I just, this was just heartbreaking all around. There's even some angst. Anyway, the point is it was just, it was all over the place, but it was, it's still the one of all the books that I just think about of things. And I know that again, I'll be rereading the series here. Probably I'm going to give myself a little time, but this is definitely one I want to revisit and read again. And again, I'm going to read the whole series again now that I've finished it, but I just love this book. And it was just, it was at heart. I mean, I, I cried, <laughs> I cried in this one. So as I said, um, I love this series and I'm so glad that I, I read it this year. But, um, so I put this at, as I said, it's, it, yeah, I still think this is the right plot spot for it, but it's the, it's the whole series, but this is my favorite book of the series. Okay, so number three, as I said, kind of fluctuates with that one quite a bit, but I just, oh, and I really want to reread this one too, but it's a standalone, but that is The Winter's, The Witch's Heart by Guinevere Gornacek. So this is following um, a witch in Norse mythology who um, was one of the wives of Loki. And I love this book. I still think about this book. I had, I got it from the library and read it, and I just got my physical copy of the paperback when it came out in November. So I haven't had a chance to reread it yet, but I have been thinking about it and I really want to. Um, I just thought there was so, it was one of the best retellings for me, uh, you know, from a dip from, I mean, we have a lot of Greek ones out there right now, but this was of a Norse one. This was one of my favorites that I've read completely. I just, I just loved it and how much I loved her so much. I can't say her name. So Agarboda, something like that, Angerboda. Something like that. She, I just loved her. I just loved her and just, th and it just hurt me when she was hurt and the things that happen when she's betrayed and then how it kind of goes, um, when it, it continues on to the end. I just love this book and I, it's hard to explain it, but it, just think, I mean, again, it has all the, the characters from Norse mythology, like Loki 
and Odin in some of the other ones. And it just, I didn't go, because I didn't know enough about her story, it was a surprise to me the way things went. It just hurt me so bad on certain points. It was just, it was definitely an emotional read for me. I just love this book and I, I really am looking forward to rereading it. I just, I just love that book and I, I would recommend it, especially um, if you like historical fiction and you like um, retellings and stuff or myth retellings. So I just, oh, it was so good. I just, I just loved it. And it just, as I said, it went in ways that I thought it was going to go a certain way, but then because I didn't know the myth well enough, I wasn't quite sure. And then some of the things she did differently, I just liked it. Anyway, it was overall really good. So number two is Perhaps the Stars by Ada Palmer, book four in the Terra Ignota series. I love this series. I reread the, the first three books this year as well, starting with Two Like the Lightning, um, because I knew the fourth book was coming out and it had been over three years since I'd read the last book in that series. So I was waiting for this fourth book for many years. And so I re, um, so I read them and then, um, and then again, I had this one and it was just, this book is almost twice as long as the other books, but it was so good. So many things happen that again, you have to read the whole series. This is a futuristic utopian dystopian book where the world is um thinks it's a certain way the people are you know but behind the scenes governments are doing things that they didn't realize so they have hives people um are are into these hives where instead of countries you were part of a, a hive and so like they were they do certain things there's ones in europe there's ones that are called the humus who are more the athletes and stuff. There's the utopians who are striving to get to Mars. And, you know, there are uh, several others that are more business-like. But you join them and you make these boshes where these like found families kind of thing. And that's how the world was structured. And then things just fall apart. And it, the this has the best unreliable narrator I have ever read. I do not normally like unreliable narrators. I really don't. I don't like um, the way that goes. But Mycroft Canner is by far one of my favorite characters of all time. And the things that happen in book four are just incredibly insane of how she twisted it. I was shocked by half the, the twists that happened. And some of them, I, a few of them, I few, few I saw coming. The rest of them, I had no idea until like a certain clue would drop and then I'd know and I'm like, oh my God. It was just, the whole time I was just like totally surprised. So if you want a sci-fi, you know, in our world, but like in the future with flying cars, <laughs> but a lot of things is very human, very much, um, the third, the last book is very much there's more war, there's things going on that, you know, are just devastating. Um, and it just, like I said, I never knew where it was going or how it was going to end up. Still, I'm, it's just a book that was just fantastic. And again, I could recommend all the audiobooks too, because I did do part of it audio, because I had to give it back to my library the book, because it took me so long to read it, because it was gigantic and it was hard for me to hold the book. Um, at the time because it was so gigantic because I don't like hardbacks but it was hard it was heavy so uh it just it was so good I just as I said I love this book I love this series I was so this is a, a one of the best endings to a series I just adored it and as I said if you're looking for that I would recommend it you just have to go in it kind of going why are we talking about this so she, her the subjects matters it's just interesting but it really is about politics and government and how that affect how some choices affect m multiple people. It's just oh, it was just as I said. It's just oh, the things that happen in this. It's just as I said, just I just adore that book, and I'm so glad we finally got that. But it's just oh, it was it was the best. It was so good at ending the series. And then number one, as I said, is no <laughs> no surprise to anybody who's been watching my channel this year because I have mentioned it several times, saying it is still my favorite book this year. And I think the only reason it beat out uh, perhaps the stars is because this was so epic in all one place. <laughs> I don't know. It's, and again, he's one of my favorite authors as well. So again, that probably helps. But my favorite was The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. My, uh, this is translated from the French and I can't think who did it. Oh, Robin Buss. 
was this. So I read this with a group of people in March for March of the Mammoths. And I, um, my goal was to finish it within the month, which I did. I love this book. There are so many twists and turns. Again, most people have, have an inkling of what the Count of Monte Cristo is, but so many things happened that I had no idea were going to happen. I like the way it um, brought things from like earlier in the book that suddenly in the end it was very important and you had no idea how that was going to connect. He, Alexander Dumas does that in all of his books, or at least the ones that I've read, and it just, it worked really well for me. Yes, there's kind of that middle ground where you're in the middle in the book where you're like, what is going on? How is this related <laughs> to the Count of Monte Cristo or to the main plot? But it comes around and you realize how it's all connected. I think, I, I just don't know how he got all those threads. Most of the, again, there's a few that were not that great, but there's certain threads. I'm like, how did he get that to work all the way through and all the way to the end? Uh, there's just so many characters. I mean, it's just, and it's just, again, it, it just went in ways I didn't expect of who lived, who died, <laughs> who was affected, who wasn't, who got off. Um, and then how it ended and stuff. I just, or how people in the end were, I just, I just adored this book. And I'm, I, again, is another one I want to reread at some point by audio next time. Cause I read it physically. Um, and I think, and just revisit it maybe in a couple of years, but I just, I just I love this book and I'm so glad I picked it. Um, even though I'm still trying to work through <laughs> the D'Artagnan romances, I just, I decided not to wait anymore. And I picked this up and I said, I read this with several other people and it was just a great experience, uh, on Boxer as well. So I just, I just, I love this book and I'm so glad I read it and it is my favorite book of 2021. So um, that's kind of it. I think that's all of it. I don't know. These are not in order, but let me pick that up. Yeah. So those are most of the books, except for the two that are on ebook, um, that I had or audio. And I just, oh, these are my favorite books of the year. So anyway, um, I hope, um, maybe you guys want to pick any of those up. Let me know. Or if you've read them and then you liked them, let me know. <laughs> Um, anyway, those are, those are all my favorites. So anyway, I think that's my, that's, that's it. That's all I have to say. I don't have, because I DNF so much this year, I don't have like a fa most disappointed. I have a few that are two stars that were like kind of annoying. Like so the ones I just read in the last week of the month was really the worst of them. But really, I don't have any books that I fully hated because I DNF'd everything so early. <laughs> This year, I didn't let myself read books I didn't want to most of the time. I mean, I read some books that were, eh, but I didn't have any. So I don't have, like, I don't have another video coming for this. So it's just my best. That's all you get. So anyway, if you've read them, let me know. Or if you want to read them, I would be curious to know that. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.